I know you probably have a lot of questions on what programming language to choose. Python, C, Java, there are a lot of options in online. How much time it will take? How do I even get started with the programming? What skills to learn in computer science? Because when I was starting my programming journey, I was also having the same doubts in my brain. So to clear all of your doubts, in this video, I will be sharing the entire roadmap of how you can get started with a computer science, with a programming language, and finally achieve your dreams of getting a highest package in computer science. So instead of me sharing the entire roadmap, I have our student's favorite, Dhruv sir, who is the batch success manager at Scalar School of Technology. And I believe he is the best person to give you the roadmap. But why? Because he have been with the students since the beginning of the college and mentor the students for ICPC, that is the Olympics of coding. And he himself secured top rank in many coding competitions and been to ICPC regionals twice in his college time. And also, he is among the top 20 coders in lead code all over India. So who else could be the best person to give you the roadmap? So quickly shift our camera towards Dhruv sir and let's know the entire roadmap. Hello sir. Hi. There is a lot of request from our viewers regarding how to start programming language. What programming language to choose? So if I just rewind back my journey of programming, in the initial phase, I also had a lot of options. There are a lot of programming languages. What are these programming languages? Mm -hmm. So, with which programming language we should start? So, this is the question that everyone will get. Mm -hmm. So, why not we start with this only? Mm -hmm. If you can explain what is the best programming language mm -hmm. to choose for the viewers, mm -hmm. then it would be really great. Mm -hmm. So, over to you. You can sure. start with. Sure, sure. So, before starting your journey, please make sure your motivation is very clear. Like, why you even want to learn programming? Like it happens with a lot of us that we buy a lot of courses but eventually never complete them. In the initial phase, I had the same problem. Like I, I used to buy courses and after some time I like, this is not interesting, let's give up this. So the reason I found out was that my why was not very clear and why I'm doing this. So first thing that you have to fix is that why I'm doing this. Just first decide on that. It could be like, I want to get the highest placement in my college. I want to do freelancing and earn some money out of it or I want to build my own startup. So I need to build some websites or I'm just someone who's just curious and want to see that how apps and websites are built. So if your motivation is clear now, now we can move to choosing the programming language. Exactly. And uh, that is a really tough part. Yeah. Because as I've already mentioned, hmm. I was having a lot of options. So it will be a really tough decision for hmm. them also. Hmm. So someone says, was saying Java is really helpful for placements. Hmm. So I started with that, but because lack of some guidance hmm. and Java also I felt somewhat difficult in the beginning. So I was not able to keep myself consistent mm. and I left Java. Mm. Then I switched to C, C programming language. Mm. Then I started watching C in 15 days, C in 15 hours, mm. something like that videos. Mm. And later on when I entered into college, I started with Python programming language. Mm. So these were a different, different shifts mm. which were happening during my journey. So I want you to give them exact clarity. Okay, if you do Java, what are the options mm. and which programming language should they start with? So C. Totally, it depends upon your goal. Like if you want to grab the highest placement in the college. So Java might be hard, but you have to do the hard thing to get that placement, right? Correct. So I would recommend starting with either C++ or Java because it will cover all fundamental concepts that would help you in the longer run. If you are someone who wants to start freelancing, so I would suggest that you can start with JavaScript because using JavaScript, you can build mobile apps, desktop apps, web apps, and all that using just one programming language. So that would be helpful. If you're someone who wants to explore AI, ML, or data science, so I would suggest go for Python. Sir, but where is C programming language? Because I still remember everyone starts suggesting start with the C programming language. But we have not even discussed about it. Yeah. So what is the case about the C programming language, whether a student should start with it or not? So whenever companies are coming in your college, so they have this assumption that you must be knowing C language. And because of that, they give a lot of output based questions in their test. Right. But you cannot completely rely on that. The reason behind this is like C will not cover OOPS concepts that are very crucial to become a good software developer. Also, C doesn't have inbuilt data structures that are present in C++ or Java. They make your life a lot easier. If you try to do the same code in C, you have to write a lot of code and you won't get that much amount of time in the coding test. So eventually you will fail that test. So you need to know some either C++ or Java. 
बट येस यू कैन स्टार्ट विथ सी बट इवेंचुअली यू हैव टू स्विच टू सी प्लस प्लस और जावा आफ्टर टू टू थ्री मंथ्स और द अदर ऑप्शन कैन भी यू कैन लर्न सी प्लस प्लस और जावा फर्स्ट एंड बिफोर द प्लेसमेंट सीजन यू कैन लर्न सी एंड इट वोट टेक मच टाइम आई थिंक इन टू टू थ्री डेज यू कैन इजिली कवर सी इफ यू ऑलरेडी नो सी प्लस प्लस और जावा करेक्ट सो बाई दिस वॉट आई हैव अंडरस्टूड इज ओके फॉर प्लेसमेंट सी प्लस प्लस और जावा But before that, if a student is really beginner, yeah. if he is facing difficulties, hmm. so he has an option to start with C programming language. Hmm. So for placements, he can go for C plus plus or Java. Hmm. For machine learning, he can go to Python. Yeah. So for freelancing, he can go to JavaScript. Yeah, so if he is confident hmm. with what domain he want to choose, yeah. he can directly skip C and he can directly start with exactly. that, whatever language you have suggested. So now choosing other programming language is done. Yeah. What is the next step? So now programming language is decided. now the actual thing starts here now you have to start with the very fundamental concepts very basic concepts like you have to understand that what are flow charts how to do a dry run how to print something how to take input learn about variables operator decision making loops functions arrays and strings all these fundamentals will be really helpful and crucial in your journey ahead i just recall one thing that i also did all of these concepts but whenever i watch some tutorials see these concepts I also did decision making. I know what is if, what is else, mm. what is the doing. Mm. But whenever a problem is approaching towards me, mm. whenever I solve a problem, then I was unable to think approach for it. So I know most of our viewers also will face the same problem, mm. but they are unable to think of an approach, think of the solution. So what would you suggest for them? Mm. Because we are learning concepts, but unable to solve the problems. So as you have started out, you will definitely face difficulties. So when you are solving a problem. Don't just directly jump into writing the code. Firstly, what you can do is see what input is given, what output is expected, and what process you can follow to reach the desired result. There is a famous quote like "Think twice and code once," which helped me a lot in my journey. Like I had this thinking that I have to solve anything and everything without taking any help, but it's okay to take help. Like what strategy I used to follow was give 30 minutes to a problem, try your best, and if you're not able to make any progress, start looking at the hints. Then after looking at the hints, spend some more time. like about 15 to 20 minutes and even if you are not able to make any progress then you can eventually look at the solution so there is nothing wrong in this see this is a learning opportunity one thing that you have to always keep in your mind that you are not mugging up things and actually understanding how the solution is working so sir most of the students what they face a problem over here is they start practicing problems hmm. but eventually after one week or one month they used to forget them when they come back again check the problem so because of this a confidence of a student is being decreased so what is the solution that you would suggest to them so to handle this so i used to make a google sheet that contained all the problems which troubled me and i used to revisit that sheet every sunday and spend some time and solve those problems again until i get comfortable with them also going forward the strategy i used to follow was like take part in as many coding contests as possible because that helps you keep everything in your mind like i mujhe raat ko 2 baje uthaoge na and i'll be able to solve most of the things but yes you don't have to start this from day 1 first focus on fundamentals once your fundamentals are clear then eventually you can move towards coding contests start attempting them again it will be difficult not very easy but yeah our goal is big enough so we yes we have to work hard correct okay. so programming languages done fundamentals are done and what how we have to approach towards problems is also done yeah. practicing and everything yeah now the next big thing is what next after this fundamentals yeah. because there are a lot of choices for students again yeah. there is data structure someone will say development so many stuff yeah. so what is the next step so talking about the next step so next step is learn about data structures and algorithms first let's discuss that why is it important and why do so many product based companies ask that the reason behind that is it gives a very fair amount of judgment at how good of a problem solver and a thinker you are that whether you will be able to come up with the solution of complex problems are you able to break your complex problem into smaller easy manageable sub problems are you able to optimize the solutions and all that stuff now what will happen is they will give you some story based problems and expect you to write the most efficient code for that now to write the code in the most efficient way you need a weapon that is data structure algorithms so you have to master that so yeah so next step will be data structure algorithms okay so another question is how to learn and where to learn this data structure and algorithm so sarup that could be an entire separate video it's so long so that will take a lot of time but yeah in short what you can do is you can start with linear data structures like arrays strings stack queues linked list and after that you can move learn about sorting algorithms binary search recursion dp bit manipulation and then you can move towards non linear data structures like trees heap trees graphs and all that 
but yeah we'll need a different video to explain all this in detail okay so data structure is one thing yeah. what tells the student can focus along with this because there are so many people tell that you have to start uh, doing mm-hmm. development also right so what are your suggestions on this right so firstly i'll suggest that don't start parallelly firstly first cover this dsa after the basics are done now you can move towards development okay. now questions come in development that what skill should i choose should i first choose android web ios so it totally depends upon your interest you can choose anything you want you just have to take one skill and master that so if start. a student is starting web for suppose yeah. what language options are he is having or we can say text tag or code base and if he is starting ios if he is starting android what will be the options of languages that he have right so let's say if someone is starting with web so for web or front end javascript is the main thing that you have to learn html is very easy you can learn it pretty quickly react you can learn if you want other than that for back end you can choose anything like you can go with spring boot that's in java you can go with node js that in java javascript you can even go with django that's in python talking about android so android you can go with java or kotlin that's the most widely used for ios you can go with swift right but there is something some things like flutter and react native that help you build apps for both platform in a single code base so you can learn that as like well. android and ios with yeah. flutter like with using flutter and react native so a single code you have to write and that code will work in both ios as well as android so the question that comes here is that where should i learn from so directly going to google and learning from documentation can be little harder as a beginner so what would i suggest is like you can go to youtube and visit free code camp and learn from there or even you can try out some udemy courses as well so make sure you're not studying tutorial hell and actually practicing it's not a netflix series that you're just binge watching and expecting that you'll become a great software developer like dusro swimming karte dekhne tumhe swimming pool nahi aayegi na to tumhe pani mein utarna padega right so similarly you have to watch videos and then practice yourself as well okay we have to start building projects right so okay now uh, after our fundamentals of programming the student can get started with the data structures yeah then he or she can start with the development part yeah. so in development they have several options yeah so sir uh i think most of the part is done so as a student i have a doubt am i job ready if i have learned all of these things whatever you have till until now sorry sir not yet so the thing is that you have learned basics of dsa now you know the basics of dsa you have done little bit development build some basic projects now you know the basics of everything like in life you should be t shirt person t shirt person like that you are having knowledge of everything and you should have a depth in at least one thing so now there are two paths here let's say you like development more so if you like development more just keep sticking to that and keep revising dsa on side by side so what you can do here is in development you have build basic projects now try to build some complex projects and also go and participate in hackathons do open source contributions and all that stuff you can go towards that side second thing could be like if you didn't enjoy development that much but you like dsa more so in that case you can try out competitive programming you can do cp you can pa- pa- take part in a lot of coding contests and prepare for asm icpc that's the olympics of coding you can okay the main thing will be the student have to have one field in which he is into the depth yeah like he has to have uh, complex projects yeah. or he have to have uh, participated in lot of uh, icpc or something yeah. contest like this yes, yes. okay now as a student i have a doubt how much time it would take yeah. for all of this which we have discussed right. for a student who is starting from zero yeah. don't have any knowledge so time as well depends upon person to person so let's say first thing are was to decide a programming language to so deciding programming language is not an issue you can decide in one day that which thing you want to learn right after you decided programming language next thing is to learn fundamentals so i would recommend spending at least 1 to 3 months learning the fundamentals understanding what exactly is happening right once the fundamentals are done now next thing that comes up is dsa so dsa you have to understand everything in depth right so you can take about 4 to 6 7 months to understand it how everything is working perfectly fine next uh, next was development right so for development it can take up to 2 to 4 months so if i sum this up i think this will be around an year okay before we look into the do's and don'ts if you guys need a full video of covering the road map of data structures or covering the road map of development then please do comment in the comment section so sir now let's see the do's and don'ts what as a beginner i should do or i should not do you can tell in your perspective when you have started your programming journey yeah. you can relate to that and you can start so rup here are your do's and don'ts so you have to start early start as early as possible it will be very helpful in your journey next would be that you have to give enough time to fundamentals 
यू कैन नॉट स्किप फंडामेंटल एक्सपेक्ट दैट यू वुड डू गुड इन फ्यूचर डोंट स्किप फंडामेंटल्स नेक्स्ट वुड बी दैट डू इन अ प्रैक्टिस सो दैट यू गेट कंफर्टेबल विद एवरी थिंग डू मोर प्रोजेक्ट्स सो दैट यू गेट कंफर्टेबल विद द टेक्नोलॉजी दैट यू हैव लर्न ऑल्सो वेन एवर यू फील यू आर स्टक ट्राई सिंग हेल्प इंस्टेड ऑफ गिविंग अप फोकस ऑन पीयर लर्निंग इट विल हेल्प यू बींग कंसिस्टेंट इन द लॉन्गर रन नेक्स्ट वुड बी गो आउट एंड पार्टिसिपेट इन कोडिंग चैलेंजेस हैकाथॉन्स यू नेवर नो यू कैन गेट इन यू अपॉर्चुनिटी देर राइट सो मेक श्योर यू गो आउट एंड टेक पार्ट डोंट्स वुड बी डोंट मग अप थिंग्स Don't get stuck in tutorial hell. Don't compare yourself with others. Focus on your learning and do the best you can. And the last one, don't just keep watching these road map videos and actually start the execution. इसको कट कर देंगे. Okay, so thank you so much, sir, yeah. for uh, giving this entire full in-depth road map video. I hope this will be really helpful for our students. Please do comment in the comment section how you felt this video. If you have any more doubts related to computer science and anything, please feel free to comment in the comment section and. do like this video and also subscribe to this channel thank you sir thank you